chapter 6. We'll do Galatians tonight. Galatians chapter 6. I'm teaching on making spiritual investments. Making spiritual investments. Galatians 6. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace. Amen. Galatians 6. Let's begin our reading from verse 7. 6 and verse 7. The Bible says, okay, it says, be not deceived. Starts with a very disturbing expression. Be not deceived. What is the deception? God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, you are at liberty to sow anything it says, provided you are prepared to also reap the harvest whatsoever a man sows he says that not another that he shall reap that means when you sow something and reap another it is deception and he says do not let anyone deceive you God is not mocked the principle he built is so powerful that whatsoever a man soweth provided it was a man that sowed it he says, that shall he reap. Then he gives it a context now that is important for our discussion tonight. Verse 8. For he that soweth. Remember the context. We are dealing with sowing. He that soweth to his flesh. Based on the fact that God cannot be mocked. Are we together now? He that soweth to his flesh. The Bible says, he shall of the flesh reap corruption the word corruption there is destruction it says but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting are we following this discussion now so paul is teaching the church in galatia and he said do not be deceived god cannot be mocked that whatsoever a man sows that shall he reap and he says that you can sow to the flesh and to the spirit. And in any case, there is a harvest waiting for you. Are we together? Let's look at verse 9. He says, and let us not be weary in well-doing. Knowing what was aforementioned now. He says, do not be weary. That means that revelation should give you an energy. That everything you are doing, if right... He says we will reap in due season that means the energy that we derive in this kingdom is not mechanical is based upon a revelation are we together the energy that drives a believer to bend over backwards even at uncomfortable times when you see people serve God whether it is convenient or not when you see people give when you pe see people serve in church when you see ministers and leaders pour themselves out number one it is because they love God but in addition to that the Bible says do not be deceived God is not mocked whatsoever a man soweth so let's discuss a few things now number one this scripture tells us that all men are farmers. Whether you are aware of it or not, the Bible says all men sow. The issue is not whether you are sowing or not. We want to examine the whatsoever you have been sowing. Because there are many results today that we are having in our lives that is not necessarily demonic. It followed the protocol of God's integrity. The Bible says that if a man sows, that man will reap. Are we together? So all men are farmers. When you wake up in the morning and sleep in the night, you may call yourself a banker, you may call yourself a man of God, you may call yourself a civil servant, you may call yourself a parent. But here Paul is giving us another angle of life and living. 
that when you get up in the morning and sleep late in the night you can call the name of what you did whatever name it suits you but that in the realm of the spirit all you did that day was farming are we together that everybody sows that is the first information that he gives us here the Bible now tells us very interestingly that anything can be sown this is dangerous so everything around our lives can be a seed your thoughts can be a seed your actions can be seeds your intentions can be seeds look at the potency you know for many of us we think that seeds in in another expression the bible says the seed is the word you see but it is not only the word that can be seeds here the bible says whatsoever can be a seed please pay attention if we are together say amen, amen. so we've established the fact that number one our possibilities in life are largely harvests please do not forget this that the things that happen to us in life whether it brings glory to jesus and us or it brings shame and degradation the bible is giving us an orientation from this point that there is a law that if that law fails it is mockery on god that means the very integrity of god is the force that maintains that law and then it tells us that the generic name for seeds is what so ever that is a disturbing revelation anything can become a seed wickedness can be a seed kindness can be a seed prayer can be a seed more than an act it is a seed benevolence can be a seed diligence can be a seed discipline can be a seed consecration can be a seed carelessness can be a seed the bible says whatsoever qualifies to be called a seed hmm. whatsoever a man soweth what kind of ground is so thirsty that it receives anything many of us here studied agriculture at least at an elementary level and they taught us that there are all kinds of soils am i right refresher course loamy soil what's the other one clay soil and you are right i don't even know what you said but you are right are we together now and we were told that certain crops do not grow well in certain soils but here is the bible introducing a kind of soil that anything sown on it can grow whatsoever a man soweth he said that man shall reap the third thing we learn here is that as far as this context is concerned there are two kinds of soils and that all of them like I said are very potent number one the flesh number two the spirit that the flesh and the spirit are both soils and can receive whatsoever and bring a harvest from them hallelujah so let me recap again so that I guide our understanding together number one our possibilities in life are largely harvests that the things that happen to us are usually outcomes that something plus something equal your condition right now are we together now and then that the Bible tells us that everyone as far as destiny actualization and advancement is concerned is a farmer and that when we wake up in the morning and sleep in the night we are sowing then he tells us that beyond the seeds we know whatsoever can become seeds this one is a powerful one I don't want you to forget anything can become a seed that is the reason why anything grows including evil 
the moment you turn evil from an act to a seed you have given it the power to grow the moment you turn godliness from an act to a seed you have given it the power to grow the moment you turn money from profit to a seed you have given it the power to grow is that true a man carries seed but that seed does not grow within him there is an environment that seed gets to and suddenly in the woman it grows that man can carry that seed for many years but time does not make the seed to grow there is a condition the seed is looking for the moment it finds that condition it begins to grow and the bible now tells us that we can sow to the flesh believers listen and we can sow to the spirit everyone is given the liberty to choose you must sow for sure the only liberty you are given is to choose whether to sow to the flesh or to sow to the spirit then the bible says knowing this this is paul's charge let us not be weary that means weariness is derived from the fact that we do not understand that we are sowing and that there is a harvest that the consciousness of the fact that there is a harvest for every seed that is sown can take away weariness remember you're dealing with gaining momentum now strength is derived from light revelation that everything i am doing today i am sowing and that based on the integrity of god this is powerful now you understand why i started from verse 7 he said do not be deceived that means every time you see a man sowing love kindness generosity diligence in church for a while it will look like nothing is happening and the moment the devil wants to lie to you here comes this scripture do not be deceived god cannot be mocked let's say it god cannot one more time please there are children today no matter how rough and lawless they are they always seem to stumble into favor they don't pray yet somebody comes to help them they are stubborn yet they free them and arrest the person who is who was even innocent from the beginning and you will find out that once upon a time that person's mother was a cleaner in a church and for many years she never had an opportunity to build a house but one day the man of God spoke to her and said, I bless you to your third and fourth generation. She did not reap it, but do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. I'm prophesying to someone already because they have laughed at you. They, for you, the devil is even telling you this thing about serving God. Does it really pay? I bring you a prophetic word tonight. God cannot be mocked. Listen, if this is all you get tonight, carry it like a weapon, more than a salmon. Satan, what did you say this morning when I woke up? Now I have an answer for you. God cannot be mocked. Do not be deceived. Every great man you see and celebrate today, any farmer who is neat, and careful while farming is not a serious farmer did you hear what i said no matter how clean and hygienic a farmer is when you enter the farm you know you went there to do business with dirt and dust there is no farmer who tries to clean a stain quickly you are farming no sir they that sow in tears So there are indices that help us know that you are farming. Number one, the tears you are crying. Number two, the condition around your life that may not carry a semblance of glory. It says for our light affliction, which is but for a moment. The Bible says it works in us a far more exceeding weight of glory. Then it says that while we look at the things that are not seen, or the things that are, are he said for the things that are seen are temporal take your mind to a farm right now and let's see what happens when a farmer is farming 
when you get to a farm with potential to produce a bumper harvest all you will meet there is cow dung all kinds of things and the farmer laboriously begins to build ridges with blisters in his hand yet he will not stop why won't he stop he knows that whatsoever a man sows sometimes he's farming and people pass him and say what a useless man are you aware that there are armed robbers that can steal crops he still would not stop him from farming even though he's aware that someone can jump into his farm he's still diligent enough to farm this is a prophetic word for someone for some of you listen you were doing well but simply because time did not seem to bring the results now the devil is lying to you that what you are doing is wrong some of you have made negative resolutions that this church thing i'm about to hang my boot i'm tired of people laughing at me and say where is the god that can give children you've been serving in church for five years god of vengeance has won my body for me god of miracles has won my battle for me i'm a winner man a winner man is won my battle for me this will be somebody's song by the end of this year listen my rewarder has won my battle for me god my lifter has won my battle for me I'm a winner man I'm a winner man has won my battle for me do not be deceived God cannot be mocked scrubbing the toilets quietly and nobody is watching you God cannot be mocked praying for your pastor where he may never see you God cannot be mocked. Some of you are outside the gate right now standing while others are enjoying the service. God cannot be mocked. Some of you were here as early in the morning. You call yourself workers. God calls you farmers. Apostle, I've been here since 12. I'm even hungry. Don't worry. It's more than working in a workforce. God cannot be be mocked did you know that there is a name that God is called in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 it says for without faith it is impossible to please him is that in your Bible it says for he that cometh to God must come believing that he is a rewarder it's not just what he does it's a name a rewarder rewards rewards are not gifts no there is meritocracy tied to rewards and I sense in my spirit like never before that one of the things God is doing in the body of Christ in this season is coming as a rewarder there are men for many years they have served the Lord they have been mocked by others hear me I'm telling you this prophetically men and women there are families that do not have any comeliness there are men of God who have served and labored in the vineyard and any kind of physical reward may not have come I assure you the rewarder is coming the rewarder is coming and you see when he rewards if you give me a plate of food when I eat now in two three hours he's gone but there is something God can give a man that your children and your children's children can eat from whatsoever a man sows that shall he reap whatsoever a man sows that shall he reap whatsoever a man sows that shall he reap and then he says he that sows to the flesh shall of the flesh reap except that he will reap destruction or corruption then he says he that sows to the spirit huh? that he shall of the spirit reap life everlasting life everlasting i hope you know it's not just talking about heaven in the sweet by and by no life everlasting is a kind of realm is a quality of living john 10 10 he says the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy that i am come that ye may have life and to have it more abundantly 
the translators made a mistake calling it everlasting life you may have heard me say everybody has everlasting life when you die that's not the end of your living we all have everlasting life what jesus came to give us and what he proposes to us even tonight is more than everlasting life it's a quality of living where the signature of the hand of God is upon your life. It becomes clear to all and sundry. The Bible says, he that cometh from above is above all. But remember, don't miss what we're dealing with now. I share that thought and we'll pray tonight. So, our seeds can be whatsoever. If I greet you, good afternoon, sir. It can be an act of benevolence, but I can turn it to a seed. Are we together? Lord, I pray that you will increase David's Christian Center. And while you are praying quietly, you think you are just being a prayer warrior, but the realm of the Spirit is saying you are swaying. And based on the integrity of God, when the seeds begin to grow and produce fruit, there are things in your life that will be a testament. The Bible says, knowing this, verse 9 now, let us not be weary. Where does weariness come from? The fatigue, the awareness that what I am doing does not seem to carry any future consequence. The good that I'm doing does not seem to carry any positive response to me it can cause weariness but the bible says let us not be weary in well doing does that look like a kind of seed remember our whatsoever concept there is a kind of seed called well doing don't be weary in it for if you so well doing he says we shall reap if we fail Now watch this. Many people keep mixing seeds. The assignment of Satan, in fact, let me put it this way. Knowing that everyone sows, Satan cannot stop you from sowing. So what he does is to program a climate. Please listen carefully. Because he is the master of the sense realm. He will program a climate that compels you to consistently sow to the flesh. Are we together now? So you step in January 1st and while you are rejoicing, someone annoys you. And you say, who, who, who's, who am I going to kill? And while you are saying all those things, negative words, you are sowing. Are we together? And then he makes you become offended, maybe in your department. And you are saying, look, this is my head of department. I'm sick and tired of this. And you do not know. Satan knows how to make men so. He can propose all kinds of things. Even for men of God. The last push and your breakthrough comes. The Bible says, if we faint not. If we faint not. Listen, if you are traveling from here, say to Abel Kuta, and it's 15 minutes for you to enter Abel Kuta. If you stop, did you get there? Would the road pity you because you went so close? This is how many people are. Some of you are just one obedience left. One seed left. One push left. You started sowing for a long time. And now you are about to give up just when you are close. Let us not be weary in well-doing. He says for we will reap in due season if we faint not unfortunately our world today prides itself in sowing to the flesh and we wonder why things are not going all right with us from the mismanagement of the media the media space social media and all forms are we together to the laxity do you know that spiritual laziness is also a seed remember our whatsoever concept 
so you get up in the morning plus jesus minus satan that is a lazy laziness as a seed the bible says god is not mocked are we together lack of word study i feel like coming to church i'm not in a good mode today what pastor preach really hits my heart and i'm angry let me just manage my anger for two weeks I'm, you see all those kinds of things listen 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 please please listen many of us right now are asking questions why is my life like this god sent me to bring perspective just because you are sincerely sowing wrong seeds does not mean the soil will not receive them if you make a mistake and delve into the lagoon the lagoon will not pity you that it was a mistake just go back if you do it intentionally you will die that mistake you may not leave to correct it humanly speaking there are many of us who do not understand this prophetic implication of seed and harvest are we together so if somebody says you are stupid he sowed his seed if you reply and say you are stupid you didn't just insult him you sowed the seeds too so two of you now have seeds to deal with are we together now it's like another person insulting you and you leave your own farming and turn to him and you're talking you will beg in harvest most of us have the devil has used distraction to stop us from sowing noble and great and powerful seeds you started well spiritual vibrancy you would get up and pray i will tie a few things and then we'll pray but god is calling you tonight except you want to live a frustrated life programming negative spiritual outcomes the bible calls us tonight to take responsibility knowing that god is a rewarder knowing that whatsoever can be seen that means it is my responsibility to partner with the holy spirit and begin to meticulously select the seeds that i sow knowing that all seeds grow number two it is also it, my responsibility to cry on to god to help me kill some seeds that may have sown because tonight we are not we are going to pray the prayer of mercy and say lord there are some seeds if that harvest should come that is not going to be a good testimony help me and kill those seeds this is where the mercy of god comes negative seeds seeds of dishonor dishonor to leadership dishonor to your pastor i said it in the room he did not hear it the realm of the spirit received it whatsoever is a seed are we together giving god far below the blessing of the lord upon your life it's a seed you are sowing a seed that programs retrogression in the future this is not some manipulation the bible remember do not be deceived what are the channels that can deceive us the media ignorant people who do not know the ways of god can come up with opinions that downplay the integrity of god and make you dwindle on something that is very noble that you are doing status quo can deceive everybody is doing it it doesn't make it right if you were in the days of noah you probably miss the ark because everybody was insulting noah but did the rain come or not did they die or not only eight people so eight people in a whole nation can be right popular opinion does not necessarily mean god's opinion is someone learning i made up my mind that i'll be mindful of the seeds that i sow there are many people who start ministry and keep sowing wrong seeds by insulting those that God is helping. You come to a great meeting like this and see wonderful things and say, oh, it's just, I think they are just lucky seeds whatsoever. What you are saying is my future, reject increase. Anytime you see growth, let it be that it was a mistake. Cancel it. The realm of the spirit keeps honoring it. You see a wealthy man, you don't know how that man suffered. You just say, this corrupt people. It's a seed. The seed means anybody who blesses me, let it be redirected out of my life. Because there is no basis for that blessing. 
I know it sounds like I'm just playing, but this is powerful. Could it be that the summation of the events, the quality of your life right now, first spiritually speaking, and then to other aspects of your life, could it be that this is a painful harvest from wrong seeds that came? It's amazing that many people criticize the things they desperately desire. They desire it and yet they do not sow into it positively. You saw someone vibrant in prayer. Your prayer life is almost dead. And you sow the wrong seed. What is there about prayer? The realm of the spirit says fine. You continue until the day demonic forces just sit on you as if you are not existing. David's Christian Center, the body of Christ, hear me. The seeds that we sow, Africa had been sowing seeds for a long time. And now, when the harvest came, we said, no, no, it's not for us. Life said, well, you have to receive what you have sown. Is that true? You change seasons by sowing another kind of seed. Another kind of seed. For someone, God is giving you a chance. Now, I don't mean to go into your past, but you sowed all kinds of wrong seeds, maybe dirty seeds. It was a continuation of seeds that came from those behind and you received that baton and you sowed negative, demonic, dangerous seeds. Tonight can be an opportunity for you to say, Lord, it can't be the way it happened to my father and my mother, but that's the same seed you're sowing. Are we together now? Yes. You can't put rice in the pot and then open the pot later and find curry there. No, sir. You can't put curry in a pot and open it later and find rice there. God is a miracle worker, not a magician. Listen to me, please. Is it true that your financial situation right now, as uncomfortable as it sounds, could it be that this is a harvest because God cannot be mocked? Could it be that this honor and shame that is all around your life today, as sincere as you look, could it be that it is a harvest from wrong and negative seeds? I don't know about you, but knowing this, I now know that I have an assignment to number one ask God for mercy that all the seeds I have sown to the flesh so I, prayerlessness is a seed laxity spiritually is a seed becoming friends with purposeless visionless people as as sociologically comforting as that sounds is a seed that is programming a negative life are we together do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. I made up my mind when I saw this as a revelation and God gave me that I will sow seeds with honor. I may cry, but I will not stop sowing the seeds. When I get up in the morning and pray, there are seeds that I'm sowing. Planting it into the womb of the spirit. The Bible says if you sow to the spirit, you will reap life everlasting let me just show you five seeds and then we're done that i want you to sow five seeds as a challenge if you make up your mind to sow these seeds ladies and gentlemen people of god i give you a guarantee by the integrity of the word that you will be ready for a 2023 that will be a sign and a wonder indeed are you ready Acts chapter 2 please let's start from verse 42 since whatsoever can be a seed I need to choose the whatsoever that is consistent with the matters of the spirit guess what the Bible says and they continued steadfastly somebody say continued steadfastly the stamina to remain is based on this revelation starting is easy but continuing you see, I understand your zeal for January, but by June, will you still be on fire? It says they continued steadfastly in number one doctrine. This time, the apostles' doctrine. 
is the word instructions listening to instructions doctrine there represents the word of god in its entirety all the precepts that make for the stature and the maturity of the believer i can invest in the study of the word and it's a seed i am sowing in the spirit is someone learning now so you make up your mind that i'm going to sow seeds of spiritual intelligence i will invest in the word buy the truth he says and sell it not the truth is not cheap believe me it will cost you if you can find my teaching by the truth i taught you on the five currencies that buy the truth currency number one is hunger hunger is a currency that buys the truth currency number two is meekness and humility these are currencies that buy the truth You must commit yourself that in the name of Jesus I will immerse myself in the word as a farmer that is sowing diligently listen the days that we live in right now will not entertain spiritual ignorance spiritual ignorance can literally without exaggeration cost you your life many have been destroyed many have even died in an untimely way because they did not understand the power of the word of god listen please look up the bible says you only arise and you shine to the degree to which your light comes you must make up your mind as a diligent farmer to invest in the word that is the first seed i want you to sow the seed of spiritual diligence in the word dig deep stay with god until the word of God the light of his word drives away ignorance from your life when you sow that seed let me tell you the truth there is no limit to how far you will rise and how far God will take you when you invest in the word hoping that you will rise just by luck is a joke many people do not invest in the word or casually invest in the world and then they want results of people with stamina no god cannot be mocked a student who reads for five minutes glossing through his notes would barely remember anything at all in the exam hall versus a student who is diligent studious as a covenant convenient or not except for other things like demonic interferences if not their results should not be the same so don't just this is the year that you will not just admire people and go back in jealousy and pain make up your mind you have your own farm too it's time to stop admiring someone else's farm and settle down to cultivate uh, there's a saying uh, your pastor would know that is an authority in that area they say the grass looks greener in the other side the question is who is the owner of that farm if the grass looks greener in the other side no grass no farm starts with green grass every farm starts with trouble there from all kinds of things plus wild animals it takes the diligence of a farmer blisters in his hands to clear them do everything plant ridges and then you plant something that grows and it becomes a source of admiration to all listen this year make up your mind to stop admiring other people's farms get to work and tell yourself in the name of jesus christ some of you have left your farm forever i know in agriculture there's what they call um bush following is enough your own is enough get back and walk that thing let the beauty and the glory of jesus be revealed don't be a man of God and people are suspecting you whether you are really saved because every revelation your scriptures are wrong your prophecies are wrong the revelation you are sharing is not correct Hapa, go back and walk so in the spirit not for competition but go back and tell yourself in the name of Jesus that any platform that Jesus gives me to reveal his glory I will not go down with shame and reproach shout amen, amen. invest in the word invest in the word number two acts chapter 2 and verse 42 they gave themselves to the doctrine of the apostles number two fellowship fellowship 
the bible says in psalm 133 it says behold how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity unity is more than just cohesion coming together it's a state in the spirit fellowship fellowship are we together fellowship when you invest in fellowship watch this especially the corporate gathering of believers there are many things that happen to you when you are in the house of god that may not happen in your personal secret place let me tell you that sincerely for instance the bible says there the lord has commanded the blessing even life forevermore there's something we call the corporate anointing no matter how in tune you are to the holy spirit you cannot have the experience of the corporate anointing in your personal time with god because the corporate anointing is a sharing of everybody's personal dealings with god made available on the platform of unity that means there is a dimension of experience i don't have with god and if someone who has that dimension comes by the power of unity i can drink of the blessedness of that experience hallelujah unity that you sow into fellowship whether it is convenient or not remember it is a seed it's time to go to church satan you are a liar rain or no rain i'm on my way to the house of god especially that you are a walker this is the year where you throw away flimsy excuses the bible says seeing that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses is that in your bible it says let us lay aside every weight and the seed wait there talk of excuses too if you look for excuses you will always find one and run with perseverance he says the race that is set before us fellowship as a seed so my coming to church so my working in church is a seed keep sowing your reward is coming when it's time to clean the pulpit you are here with joy father thank you for the honor of beautifying your house people will laugh and say oh this church girl I'm sure she thinks you'll get a husband in church don't worry the day God will sort you eh? he will not if, if God gives you a husband alone that is not even enough you know there are people who represent nations when they looked at two children in her stomach they said there are two nations not two children there are prepared blessings that God can bring people in one day while you are cleaning the place the person who will make you the African director of his company just walks into church and says, I'm looking for Pastor Kingsley. I say, oh no, he's not around. I say, okay, but you're a diligent lady in the house of God. What do you do? Well, I read this. He said, that's not my business. The fact that you can work in the house of God. Do you have a job? He say, I've never worked since I graduated. So you are the one the Holy Spirit spoke to me about. The rewarder. When people hear, say, is that all the story? That is all the story. It is favor. My brother, it is favor. It's not, it's not everything. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are we together? If you don't believe what I just told you, you are not a Christian. That means you don't believe God rewards. How many of your properties are in Lagos? But they are as harvests. You will never get them because you didn't sow anything. In the house of God, while you are sowing, God will vow a vow with himself. Because you did this, your children will never have to beg for bread again. Years ago, I used to play keyboard for a ministry, one of the ministries that went to preach for Basanjo when he was in prison. It was my keyboard pastor, small keyboard. I would carry it. The church, just, they came and opened a branch. It was a prison ministry that just started a church service. And I would go to our local assembly and when I returned their church, their meeting was afternoon meeting. I would carry my keyboard and trek to a hotel that they were using. My own keyboard. 
I will trek to the hotel, set it up. You, you know all the things that happen in church. This one is frowning. This I will just mind my business and play and go back. Let me tell you the truth. You may have heard me say it in my teachings. Nobody ever told me thank you. I stand before the God of heaven. I never knew that one day I will have an apostolic call. But there were seeds. There were times that it, it, I would be so tired. You know how church sometimes, you know, things can happen when you are doing your best and it looks like it's not. The only thing I remember was during one time, one time they were launching the man of God's cassette and I got one cassette and one bottle of Fanta. One cassette. Free, I didn't pay for, and then one bottle of Fanta. That's the only thing I can remember getting. But I made up my mind that Lord, if it is for your glory, I didn't know that heaven was recording it. Farmer, keep sowing. Keep sowing. Keep sowing. Keep sowing. There is nobody who comes out of nowhere. Please bury that demonic mindset once and for all just because you don't know where they came out from does not mean they did not come. they look let me tell you there are laws god cannot be mocked god cannot trust you with the destinies of men you can deceive men but there are laws in the realm of the spirit there is a strict immigration system you don't bribe your way into certain realms of influence you don't bribe your way into certain levels of honor, notoriety, and grace. There is a track record that God himself vets. So when you see your pastor today and what God is doing in his life, you see when you see masters operate, the proof of mastery is ease. Usually the steps are beyond plain sight. People have so worked their system, they have mastered how it works. So you will be mistaken to think just because it's easy for them, it is easy. It is easy for masters, but not easy. Hallelujah. If I begin to tell you some of the things that we did spiritual job there, this is not the night to discuss this, but let me just tell you the truth. If you sow to the flesh, you will reap of the flesh corruption. Apostle, but people have annoyed me. This is the year I said, me, I will not keep quiet. Uh -uh. That's why God sent you here tonight. You have done well to sow nice seeds. You want the devil to deceive you now. To cancel everything. Because you want to be yourself. The Bible does not tell us to be ourselves. It tells us to be like Christ. It's a risk being yourself. You better find out what is in yourself. Before you want to be it. It says we should be like Christ. Paul said in this flesh there is nothing that is good within this flesh he marked himself and this was his assessment I hope you understand the concepts of be yourself that I that I I'm not saying don't find expression I just mean that the, 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 the man of the flesh without the assistance of the spirit I look back today and I thank God for the times of prayer with no reward there was a time in my life you would not believe this where I would buy bread and put granite you know how you put granite don't act like you don't know what I'm saying bread and put granite are we together? Yeah. with ginger I think it's a healthy meal no wonder we are still standing first crusade that we went for 
we were going there by faith just because God said to me while the crusade was going on you know what it means to preach in a miracle service with bills waiting for you the people you are owing are there while you are shouting Jesus the same yesterday today and forever and to make matters worse the sick now genuinely get healed who is that God that heals the sick I remember when that crusade was over and everybody was returning we didn't have the transport to return people but it was a mighty meeting not so much I, I don't think maybe the entire crusade ground may not be more than the people who were seated here but it was with honor and joy what is there to be ashamed of we were starting and with nobility yet that little thing would be a global ministry that would bless people who has laughed at you who has looked at you and despised your little beginning and you are about to join them to kill that little beginning not knowing that the whole world one day will rejoice at the investment of God's hand upon you let me tell you the truth the pressure that I went through after that crusade it would take a madman to do another one and as soon as we went back I didn't even rest God said to do another one again by the next year I said God what is this I was looking for 150,000 naira to sort some of the people. I know you think it's little. Someone signed a check for me. I called the people to come and take it. When they came and went to the bank, the check bounced and they said, this time we're not coming alone. You know what that means? We're not coming alone. I didn't steal. I didn't kill. What was your offense? For your glory, I will do everything just to see you, to be holy as my name. Listen, it was at those times and within those processes that we saw certain things. My faith did not just develop from Bible study alone. Pain was a gift that stretched that faith. There are things that you go to where, no matter how you cry, God answers your prayer by leaving you there. I know you don't like what I'm telling you now. There are times that you being left in that situation is an answer to your prayer. God is telling you, you are going to be healing nations. And now you are in a situation. And while you are right there, God says, stay. I'm working on you. Fear not, he says, I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. He says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Through the rivers, he said, it will not overwhelm you. Then he says, when you walk through fire. You don't run through fire. You walk because there are things that fire must roast pride flesh vain glory those are the seeds that you are that you are carrying to go and sow and God says no when you walk through I can do it by myself let's go when you see people starting out in life and they are arrogant don't fight them just leave them there is already a system if it's God they are following something in their life will work on it one day you see the person after five years and he says good afternoon sir. i say what happened uh -huh. the refiner's fire maybe someone is in that season right now you must interpret what you call answered prayer there are many people god answered your prayer from the day you started crying in fact the tears was because the prayer was answered and he said stay there there is something about the nature of man you need to learn if you don't learn this you cannot be a great leader you are going to be birthing nations but there is something naomi i need something there is something you need to know about the faithfulness of god otherwise you will not appreciate the favor that comes from the farm of boaz god give me abraham he's making you sarah now why are you complaining it is only sarah that can marry abraham <laughs> If it is Abraham you want to marry, 
then focus on being Sarah and let me tell you go and read about Sarah it takes more than beauty to be Sarah is someone learning I want to be David right whoever sits on that throne and last must be David so while you have claimed David God is saying let's go through the training of David and I said Lord I don't want that just give me Melchizedek or the one you know somebody's training and make magically make me David no be careful what name you ask from the Bible because all the names have the requisite the names are harvests you know how you go to a store and you say I like this I like this and forget the price tag there are some things that are so expensive it's a mockery to put price tags there there are cars that you go you don't even touch them have you seen that now you are not allowed at all you don't in fact they have to vet you to allow you get they don't want to destroy the relationships they have with other people so you can see it looking cheap and he said this is cheap i can take on this put this in the basket put this in the basket this little one add it to and then when they make the bill it's more than your house rent that's how life is listen I'm wrapping up most of us love to claim realms and dimensions and harvests uh, God mix Benny Hinn Reinhard Bonker RTL Osborne and a little of Billy Graham excellent combo and God says let's go after one month you are casting God binding God and say no this fasting is to this can God does not work like this give your car give your houses carry everything and bring it say no way it's not my God the one who died does not behave like that and yet that's the harvest you want I hope I'm not wasting your time Lord I want to carry the anointing and grace that brings healing to nations it is available I was told a story years ago maybe this will be the last story and then we'll pray a gentleman I, I think it's, it's, it's fiction just to explain to illustrate something that this gentleman was frustrated and he said Lord serving you does not seem to pay I'm tired of this thing there are no rewards you are blessing other people and other people are suffering you know the monkey they walk baboon they chop thing and then one time he was caught up in the realm of the spirit and I think he went to heaven or something like that then he entered a room that had crosses cross many crosses representing the assignment the mandates and the burden that men carried on earth and then the Lord told him okay since you have complained and charged me unfaithful pick whichever one that you want he saw some giant crosses he saw some and then he saw one tiny one that looked like a necklace and he ran quickly to pick it and the Lord told him but that's the one you always had you are just picking the same thing that you had and he said this thing so there are people carrying these other ones that those are the ones you are envying on it behind every glory no there is not only a story behind every glory there is a track record of seeds 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 my concern right now is to keep sowing the seeds that make for glory seeds that make for advancement seeds that make for sowing in the spirit I will pray like never before I will fast like never before I will study the Word of God like never before let's finish up Acts 2:42. they gave themselves continually to number one doctrine the word number two fellowship number three the breaking of bread communion unity breaking of bread there does not just mean communion like holy communion alone it's it's symbolic again an extension of fellowship a state of unity that whatever price you can pay to be at peace with the brethren within the context of the house of God sometimes it is inconveniencing but make sure you never lose capacity to break bread that means you will endure a lot of things you may be misunderstood but you are mandated to break bread and that with a joyful heart and finally he says prayer you sow these seeds the word 
I'm coming to the house of God. I live in peace with the brethren. Regardless what is happening in my department, I make up my mind as a revelation that I will not be offended. I will serve whether it's convenient or not. I will give my best, not with hypocrisy and eye service like the Bible admonishes us. You see that? And whilst you are doing that, the Bible says you are sowing to the Spirit. And it leaves you with an assurance that you will reap life. The fifth seed, of course, that I want to add here is the seed of obedience. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. In one word, faith is obedience. In one word, faith is obedience. You are not walking in faith if you are not obedient. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 and 2. It shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and obey all the commandments which I command you this day. That is the seed. What is the harvest? That the Lord your God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. Verse 2 says, And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. To obey your pastor. He gives you an instruction and I take this as the voice of God over my life. I will be obedient. Oh, all of you people, church people that they are doing as if they are controlling you. It's a seed. You can choose to sow to the flesh or to the spirit. And the Lord comes to honor you and says, gentlemen, it's time to lift you to the nations. And people will ask you, how did you get here? And you will tell them, by the grace of God, the things that we enjoy today are harvests from the seeds that we have sown i made up my mind that i would be very meticulous about the seeds that i sow and with a greater sense of intention and consciousness i have paid attention to seeds that i sow in every area of my life any harvest i do not want i will not sow the seed and if for any reason i have sown the seed then I will do what I'm about to lead you to do. To cry for mercy. And say, Lord, let those seeds die. Thank God in the Bible, seeds can die. That is good news. Because the farmer sowed and there were some seeds that died. That means there is a condition. Lord, whatever condition will make these negative seeds I have sown to die. There are some of you who need to pray it. Because the jealousy, the envy, the ill speakings. I shouted, I said, you are telling lies and you say, if I am lying, let me die. It was sown. Based on how many times you have said it, only God knows how many days are left. You must trust God for grace and kill that seed. I'm not threatening you. Be not deceived. God cannot be mocked. So the Bible says we can make spiritual investments. Your pastor is a financially intelligent man. And many of you here are financially intelligent. There is only one way money grows. Investments. Money is a type of anything that grows investments the only way your spirit man grows is by investing in it the only way your home will grow you cannot do nothing as a husband and want the result of someone actively investing in his family it's called fraud apostle i'm tired of poverty stop wishing start sowing sow into your mind so into knowledge so into the lives of those who through faith and patience have obtained the promise every mountain is relative to the victim looking at it to an ant what you call a little mold hill is a mountain but to an adult who is standing you can jump across it what you are calling mountain is relative to your perception learn from those he says go to them that sell and buy there is a level of anointing you are trusting God to step into and it looks like you are limited. Stop calling those more anointed than you colleagues. Humble yourself and follow with diligence. Colleague mentality has deceived many people. You don't receive from colleagues. For many of you, your pastor is prophesying over your life 
and you say, well, I can hear later on. Thank God I have money to buy the tape. The Holy Spirit is not a fool. Even though he's the Spirit of God, the state of your heart can make you abort precious moments because of lack of discernment. I hope I didn't offend you. It's time to begin to make spiritual investment. Listen, irresponsibility is one of the things that is destroying the church in Africa. We sit down and just wish because of the presence of grace. We just wish that everything just happens. I will magically have a church that is flourishing like this. I will magically have partners come to stand with me. Whether I have integrity or not, it does not matter. I will magically have power whether I pray or not. Whether there's consecration or not. I will magically become an anointed man of God sound in doctrine. Whether I buy books or not, it doesn't matter. Pastor Stapes, is he the only man of God? And God is watching you. After sowing all those negative seeds, don't stand with what you know today and say, why is my life like this? You beat your wife, you insult your children, you compare her with other people, call her prostitute, respectfully speaking, or you do the same to your husband. Say, I don't know whether I married a man or a woman in this house. You keep prophesying negative and demonic harvest. And the man says, I will remain a woman to you. I will be a man to those who honor me as a man. Then since you have carried me as a fellow woman, we'll be, two of us will be women in this house. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but as for me, oh, this journey we're just starting. No matter how people clap, I know we're just starting. There are high level nation shifting seeds that we need to begin to sow. The seeds we are sowing now is not for ourselves again. It's not for tea and bread again. Seeds that bring revivals in nations in one day. These are the kinds of seeds. Seeds of prayer. Lord, change Africa. Change the spiritual cli climate of this nation. For someone, you need to single-handedly go and start sowing seeds of revival over your children. Complaining and saying, I don't know what kind of demons I gave birth to. Mama, stop that complaint and go back. In the name of Jesus, if they came out from my womb, they must serve my God. You are sowing seeds. Forget about whether he's sleeping in a beer parlor. You just sow the seed. Be not deceived. God cannot be mocked. And finally, there are many of you who have never given to anybody. Financially speaking, every time there is a call in the house of God, you act as if it's not you they are talking to. And God is watching you. It doesn't matter whether you have money or not. In the realm of the spirit, it's still the same. Because there is nothing that the kingdom does not have. And there's no signature that, Lord, you have done this. And I'm blessing you. I'm not talking about money. I'm just challenging you holistically. You want to gain momentum and to make progress. I made up my mind that I will sow, I will be a giver, I will never preach what I don't believe, and I will not preach what I don't do. If I'm preaching giving, then I will not be the person to sit down and withhold. There is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. That's, there is he that withholdeth more than his meat. I hate poverty. It is not good. So wishing it and saying poverty will not come to me, that is not the harvest for prosperity. The harvest for prosperity is to sow seeds of diligence, seeds of relationship, seeds of value. Are we together now? Let's pray. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you. So you do what you do. We need a more. Let's sing it one more time. You are crying your heart to Him. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on.
do not be deceived God cannot be mocked in 2007 I was tired of in this case now my financial condition I remember I went for a conference pastor I really was sad not because I'm not a materialistic person at all but poverty is bad whether you are materialistic or not it is wicked and demonic let me tell you why poverty is bad because it interrupts the well-being of your life and the advancement of the program of God if poverty were neutral I would not have any problem with it but it can interrupt you in a way that even sickness will not interrupt you but I remember that night it was a prosperity convention people gave I was outside when I went home the Lord gave me an instruction to give literally everything I had I'm not calling for seats don't worry listen I got up that morning 3 p.m. God is my witness carried it was not so much I had but I was I was determined wishing to rise is wasting your time Desire is important, but it's only the first step. Desire must intermeddle with wisdom to profit you. And with wisdom, there must be action. The Bible calls it well-doing, more than well-thinking, more than well-wishing. There must be a doing for it to be called sowing. And I made up my mind. I remember the next, I prayed for three hours, laid my hands on that, whatever it is, my, my bag, I got up and I dragged it to church. I got to church and there, it was an overflow like this. I was outside. People came and were dropping seeds on the altar. And now I stayed back there. God just instructed me to remain there. When everybody had dropped it, God said, I can now go to the altar. I carried that bag and I was dragging it. With every step I knew I was dying. There, you see, it's easy to give Ishmael. But if it is Isaac Bar. You must be a man of faith. I took that thing and I dropped it at the altar. I went back and I sat down. I say this with every sense of humility and responsibility. The Holy Spirit spoke to me expressly and said, Son, from this day you have entered wealth. Nothing happened immediately. Don't think my life changed. It was the same, same thing there. That was a seed. There are seeds that are called precious seeds. He that weepeth, bearing precious seeds, shall doubtless return again rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. I look back today and I just laugh. I say, my God, what if I disobeyed that day? What if I loved my yesterday more than my tomorrow? Like many of you now love your today more than tomorrow. Remember, the Bible says for our light afflictions, which is what for a moment, it walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory. I remember a time when the Lord instructed me for 72 hours. I locked myself praying nonstop. My eyes did not see whether it was morning or afternoon or evening. Ah, you are just lucky. Hallelujah. After that time, I said, Lord, wherever you want to use me, I'm available that you can use me for your glory. Those times, then there was no internet like this and it was a cafe. I would get a fluffy disc and go and, I didn't have the money to pay and browse anytime I liked. And then in the night it seemed to, to browse faster so I would go there in the night and spend night vigils downloading messages and teachings that will help me because I was desperate to grow not competition not ministry Jesus there are two prayer points we're going to pray my apologies for stretching a bit with the time the first prayer is going to be the prayer of mercy please listen there are many of us right now, if God were to leave your harvest based on the seeds you have sown, except you want to lie in the house of God, 
you know that you have sown to the flesh carnality unseriousness prayerlessness it comes to be part of the whatsoever that can be sown jealousy hatred bitter envy wordlessness prayerlessness laxity when others were praying in the new year you were just snoring your way into a new dangerous season that requires discernment while men slept the bible says the enemy came we are going to pray standing upon the grace that is in this house that father for every negative seed that i have sown i have despised the prophecy of the man of god he has spoken over my life and i despised it i obtained grace by the blood of jesus let those negative seeds be destroyed i do not want a harvest please pray i do not desire a harvest a future that is full of unnecessary battles a future that is full of unnecessary battles let every seed that is not by the spirit and sown in the spirit i place a demand upon the blood someone is praying outside make sure you are praying just few minutes to maximize tonight we are making spiritual investments do not be deceived God is not mocked whatsoever a man sows that shall he reap you sow to the flesh you will of the flesh reap destruction you sow to the spirit you will of the spirit reap life everlasting let the blood speak let the blood speak let the blood speak, the blood speak over the negative seeds the negative programmings hallelujah some of you have sown negative seeds by fighting your wife the bible tells you you quarrel with your wife there is no peace your prayer will not be answered swallow your pride and pray some of you have insulted your parents calling them names because you went to school negative seeds some of you have insulted men and women of god calling them all kinds of names some of you have insulted leadership within your time i'd like you to pray let the blood speak oh god i do not want a future that is full of pain do not be deceived god is not mocked whatsoever a man sows that shall hear it for in jesus name we pray for in jesus name we pray aside from pastor and those in front if you cannot like you to find a neighbor just pair yourselves in two you are going to pray this prayer you are going to cry praying for yourself agreeing with your neighbor whoever you find whether two or three you are going to decree and declare every seed that you want to see soul of the spirit a life of spiritual vibrancy character prayer obedience i like you to begin to prophesy it into the life of the person whose hand you are holding pray from the depth of your heart father david's christian center remains a place of fire a place of the word a place of fellowship the breaking of bread the ministry of prayer sowing to the spirit sowing to the spirit is someone praying 
Sabrakatos kapekatos leke prendeke baruse seke prege di balatos. Sabreke tebe leke to brasko to baruse ke tebe leke to siata. Krete beke te pronto ka baruska bere tu siakata. I declare over my brother, I declare over my sister, the grace to invest in your prayer life. Someone pray, the grace to invest in your word study life. Giving yourself continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Giving yourself continually to corporate fellowship. Giving yourself continually to obedience giving yourself continually to fellowship with the spirit hallelujah 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 let me add one last prayer you are going to pray over yourself Lord, the grace to stay until my harvest comes. Listen, listen, listen. The Bible says in Acts 2 42, they continued steadfastly. Galatians 6 9 says, We will reap in due season. You will not reap every day, but in due season. I will hold on through the storm. I will hold on to your word My life will soon reveal You're the lifter of men The lifter of men This is a word for someone Will you hold on through the storm May not look like it But will you hold on to his word your life will soon reveal He's the lifter of men Lifter of men If you had seen some of us Maybe 17, 20 years ago We did not look like it Nothing of glory looks like it Until you stay Please hear me Somebody is about to give up on church right now Someone is about to give up on the body of Christ. Someone is about to give up on the wife, give up on the husband. But this is my final word for you. Stay. There is power in waiting. Please hold on through the storm. Will you hold on to his word? Your life will soon reveal He's the lifter of men The lifter of men I'm prophesying to you That will you hold on through the storm? Will you hold on to His word? Your story is about to change By the lifter of men I will hold on to your word I'll hold on through the pain My life will soon reveal You're the lifter of men Hallelujah Please everybody stand We're wrapping up Everybody stand Stand. I want to make an altar call now. Many years ago, sir, I went to preach somewhere in Ibadan. No, I didn't go to preach. Something took me there. And I went to a hotel called Premier, I hope the name is correct, Premier Hotel, one hotel up the mountain. I went there, it was a beautiful place, and I had no money. I went to wait for someone I remember. 
and the person disappointed me he did not come it was night I didn't have money to pay for that place but I was in training with God praying and fasting crying to the God of heaven to find expression through my life it was night I remember 10 11 in the night I remember it like yesterday I saw people coming in they were ushered in beautifully went and looked through the reception you know and I didn't have the money to pay and since I'm not a thief I made up my mind I just stood and I said Lord God of heaven look at this but then I knew that it was a moment of sowing that one day since God cannot be mocked this shame will be turned to glory a few years later many years now but a few years after that time I went to preach please listen we're wrapping up you must hear this I went to preach somewhere in Ibadan and there was a convoy of people who oh, apostle we're happy to have you in our city and they said can we take you to go and rest then we were on our way going and I noticed they were climbing a hill and they got to a place and there were people standing ushers and they opened the door and I was standing in front of that same place this time around not with the shame that I had before the harvest had come the days of prayer had paid off the days of studying the word and learning I'm not saying this to brag I hope you understand the, the morale and you know the people came the management came we're happy to have you around and they took me to the highest floor I don't know what they call it and they kept me there I went with this my lovely people and so when they went there, I was preparing for the meeting and these guys were swimming and playing table tennis. They were enjoying everything that came at me and I was watching them from the window. They would then play table tennis, swim and then take, I think maybe there was a drink kept for them and I said, it's not your fault. Oh my dear. <laughs> I'm saying that because I want to prophesy to someone. Your suffering today is a harvest that your children's children will eat from. The constraints, the sacrifices that you're making. Listen, there are many people and many meetings and many ministries that I sneaked into years ago. I sat inside some I sat outside and when the people came to invite me many years ago they never knew that I had once been to their meetings quietly they said you may not know our place let me describe and I say, I know it I'm not too old to forget I know I was there doesn't bring dishonor but it brings it is a revelation that God cannot be mocked when I make an altar call this will be the last prayer that Lord since you cannot be mocked show up for me answer everything that I said where is your God where is your God this you're coming to church will this year be like other years again please hear me someone came to church tonight invited by loving people or invited by the spirit of God right here and you're saying apostle for me the seeds that I've been sowing will not only destroy me in this life but even in the life to come because I've sown the most dangerous seed any man can sow and that is to reject Jesus. It is a seed. The harvest is eternal. Eternally separated from the presence of God. You are here inside, you are here outside and you are saying, Apostle, while I heard you talk about sowing seeds, I was not just thinking of money and a job. For me, it is my eternal destiny. Our time is up. I'm working on borrowed time. I'm going to count one to five. For someone you are saying, Apostle, I remember making this decision for Jesus. But as it is right now, my life has gone haywire. I've given into the flesh. And I cannot truly say that my relationship with Jesus is intact. What a joy to start this glorious year on a correct note. As I count one to five, I want you to leave your seat boldly without any sense of shame to come and stand right before me here please make sure you're not pretending once the front is full 
then those who are outside may just have to make do with their screens outside i begin my counting now someone has to be bold enough to make it right one david's christian center we celebrating them as they come young and old rich and poor if any come those coming from outside please allow them if there is space come remember excuses are seeds excuses are negative seeds too come celebrate them they are coming please those coming from outside let them come when the glory comes there'll be no words to say oh, oh, oh when the glory comes there'll be no words to say oh, oh, oh. if you're joining them please come quickly i want to pray for you now when the glory comes there'll be no words to say oh, oh, oh. when the glory comes there'll be no words to say God that can tell the joy in the heart of the Father and the joy in the heart of the man of God, the angel and the Father over this house. There is nothing that comes close to a life that is surrendered to Jesus. It is the greatest, the wisest, the noblest, most precious seed. For he gave his greatest seed to give you an opportunity to give you his best Jesus it was not an archangel that died mm -mm. it was not a cherub that died it wasn't one of the 24 elders or any of the beings and the creatures in heaven he literally sold his best not even the father violated this because he could not be mocked he could not cast sin out of men and just wish salvation he had to sow the seed of Jesus and today the harvest of many sons to glory I salute you ladies and gentlemen some of you are crying there's nothing to be ashamed of we're standing before Jesus the noblest way to gain momentum for such a great year thank you for making this decision may I please request as an act of surrender that you lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender to Jesus the son of the living God and I request that you repeat after me knowing that he is here the Bible says as many who will come to him that he will in no wise cast away please say after me lord jesus one more time say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i declare that i believe in you i declare that i believe you died for me i believe you rose again for my justification right now i receive jesus into my heart as my savior as my lord and as my king i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever i am a child of god amen Keep your hands lifted father thank you for this ones the bible declares that as many who will come to you you will in no wise cast away thank you for the grace and the courage that you've given every one of them and the many who are following by way of television or by way of the internet across the globe it's an opportunity for you to make jesus lord of your life in your homes your offices perhaps you might be watching by way of rebroadcast it is never too late when it has to do with jesus and for those of you who are out here, I decree and declare, based on the integrity of the word of God, that your sins are forgiven. We call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. 
the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over your life i impart upon you grace to live the victorious life and i commend you to the ministry of the holy spirit and the ministry of the word may you be grounded in righteousness and every power that will not let you serve god acceptably i command that it must let you go in jesus mighty name we pray somebody guide me okay now here's what i want you to do for me very quickly those of you who are here in front thank you very much there is a lady one of the counselors waving her hands may i please request that you follow her it'll be a minute or two just to have an information and to follow you up could you just move as they okay so let's let's appreciate them give jesus a big hand clap That the best you can do, Davis Christian Center. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Whilst they are going out, I stand in faith with the grace upon the angel of this house, Pastor Kingsley, and I decree and declare in the name that is above all names, everything that has mocked God in your life, it comes to an end now. I speak over you that this year when men say there is a casting down for you let it be that there is a lifting up I declare that your spiritual life is alive and robust and every other aspect of your life must answer to the same in the name of Jesus Christ you go from glory to glory you go from grace to grace for in Jesus mighty name we pray amen and amen Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, please, everybody, just remain where you are as much as you can. Um, I still want us to, I want I and Apostle to just um, still pray. Um, when we have these meetings, um, usually every year when we have this program, at some point in the program, usually on Sundays, um, we challenge people to give financially. And um, earlier today, God was telling me that we should receive the offering today on Wednesday. I was like, we don't receive the offering on Wednesday. We don't receive seeds on Wednesday. And um, God kept telling me, do it today. And I was like, our church members might not even be around today. That is Sun it's Sunday that I know that everybody, you know. And um, so me and God kept having that discussion until um, Apostle started to preach what he was preaching. So I knew why God said, do it today. Because I feel people's hearts will be prepared. Apostle has preached a lot of times, so he can bear witness that I've never done this when he preaches. Um, but what I saw him preach was a confirmation of what God was telling me. Um, so I want to challenge you today to give. Um, it, will be, it, will be, it will be deceit for me to pretend that um, giving is not a major part of deceit. So he has shared his testimonies. I can't start to share mine. It's crucial. So today, um, I want to ask everybody to give. Give something special as you are led of the Spirit. However, there is um, a special call I want to do. I feel led in my heart to do. And there's a special number of people I feel want to do it. So this is how it's going to work. I'm going to call a, a certain figure for those that feel that's what God is laying in their heart. For the rest of you, just give anything you like to give. But everybody should give something in response to what we've had. Then we're going to stand in prayer. So but if you are here... And you can give a million upwards. You can give a million and upwards. Please raise your hand. They will give you. A, there's a figure I have in my in my spirit of how many people can do it. All right. So just please raise your hand if you can give a million plus, either a million or more, depending on what God tells you. Please just raise your hand. They will give you a slip. We'll break quick. I, I'm not motivating you. I don't have time for that. I believe you to have the spirit of God. So it's not. I'm not preaching a sermon. I just need people that feel. There is a resonance in their spirit to do that. Every other person you give as you are led we will not call any figure. But I'm speaking specifically to some people here as I'm led of spirit. Quickly raise your hand. I have two minutes and we're going to pray. It's not, it's not a long ceremony. So even if you're outside, please raise your hand. They'll give you a slip. There's no long ceremony involved in that. Quickly, let's do that. We're just going to stand together and pray um, over your life. You want to sow a million plus. You're going to sow it in this January. It's not 10 years program. All right. The rest of the people, please just give as you are led. God knows your heart and your capacity. But I specifically speak to people that want to give a million and above. 
I'm going to pray with you. We're going to stand in faith with you. All right. Uh, ushers, are we done? I don't, I don't, I don't want to waste time on this. Please raise your hand if you're going to do this. It's important. Um, I have a number in mind. That's why I'm, I'm asking you to raise your hand so that I can give you a pleasure sleep. Ordinarily, we will not still call you or monitor you. Nobody's going to chase you. There's no such thing. Okay. If they've not given you a sleep, please still raise your hand. If they've given you a sleep, you can put your hand now. If they've not given you a sleep, please raise your hand if you are interested in, in that particular figure. Okay. All right. Please follow your heart as, as you are led. Okay. Thank you. All right. So we're going we're gonna to pray together. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Um, while he was saying that, please add me to the list I have to give. I don't believe in, you see, anything you don't believe in, anything you don't believe in will not work for you. I, I, can, I can already feel the discomfort in him even doing this um, generally, but I can tell you by the integrity of God's word, I know that people have been deceived, manipulated, unfortunately and sadly. However, I can tell you by the integrity of God's word, just a word on what he said. If you don't have a revelation, you don't have to do. The Bible says, every man let him give cheerfully and not grudgingly, for God loves a cheerful giver. But like we said, every whatsoever is a seed. And there are seeds that are called precious seeds. Hallelujah. So Father, we pray for those who have given, those who everyone who has committed himself herself to give even financially and lord especially those who have committed themselves to give as challenged by pastor in the name of jesus because you are not to be mocked i decree and declare may your harvest come speedily some of you are sowing money but what you will reap is wisdom some of you are sowing money but what you will reap is strategic relationships some of you are sowing money but what you will reap is revelation that will define the next decade of your life and i stand in faith with the man of god the angel over this house to declare from the depth of my heart may my god bless you i declare that your seed will bruise the head of the serpent in the name of jesus you are blessed you remain blessed forever. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Lord, um, honor your word. As your people have acted in obedience, honor your word and show up for them. In the name of Jesus. Thank you because there will be a bountiful harvest. For everyone that has sown in faith, regardless of the size, Lord, you are a God that multiplies our seed sown. Honor your word in the life of everyone in the mighty name of Jesus. This is the lowest you will ever be. And I decree over you, the economy of whatever country you find yourself will never be a limitation for how far God will take you. I release grace for global relevance over you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father.